Hey, let's make some more noise for Jesus right now. Come on. Oh, man. And I got to just say, come on, was that awesome or what? Boy, I, I love it, man. Woo, you guys, you guys are too much. Hey, uh, you know, I, I just want to take a second, and maybe you're new in here, uh, and I feel like I haven't done this in a while, so I just want to welcome you and tell you that you belong and that you're family. Can we make some noise in case somebody's new in here and welcome them to the family? It's true. You belong here, you belong here, you belong here. Hey, we're going to open our Bibles to Ephesians 6, 10. Uh, I'm excited. I've got a lot of passion, and so uh, we're going to jump right in. But before we do, I've got to encourage you, please take notes. Note takers are history makers. I really believe that with everything in me. Store up God's word inside the well of your heart. And if you don't got a Bible with you today, don't sweat. Nobody needs to be sweating in here, okay? Uh, we're going to have the scripture up on the screen here in a moment. But note takers are history makers. Get it inside your heart. And so as you're turning to Ephesians 6 and you're opening up your Bibles, I want to share with you something that's on my bucket list. Something that I, I just can't wait. Uh, I plan to do this in Jesus' name. I want to go to the Albuquerque Balloon Festival. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, the Albuquerque Balloon Festival. And so um, if you've ever heard of that, can I just see your hand if you know what I'm talking about? Okay, okay, two people in the room, hallelujah. Um, so you're three people, so, so you're with me. Um, that's okay, it's okay, it's on my bucket list, let me tell you about it. So basically, it's hundreds and hundreds of hot air balloons that are inside a field, and they all take off, and it's, it's crazy. It's one of the craziest things that you, I mean, you, you'll ever see, and, and so as I've researched it, and I've looked into it, um, you, you know, they say that when you go, and you're on the field, and all you see is these hot air balloons, and, and you've got like a gundalo, and so basically what that is, you're like, what, the, what, it's like the box that you would get in, okay, and so, right, yeah, so, so when you go there and you see this thing, it's roped to the ground, holding it tight, and now the gundalo holds about 20, uh, like, like 12 to, to 15 people, okay, they can all climb into the bucket of, of this thing, and so uh, they get into the big, uh, the, 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 the bucket, and you've got the balloon, going up, and they've got helium in it, and then they've got, a, like, an engine, and it's, like, full throttle, it's fired up, it's roaring, and they say that when you're, when you're standing in it, and you're on the ground, as I've researched, I've not done this, but I plan to, okay, they say that when you're on it, and you're looking in it, and the engine's going, and it's, like, roaring, you get this strange feeling. There's, like, this excitement, there's just something about being right there next to this giant cannon, <laughs> You know, it's wild, and, and you're watching fire blow up into the balloon, heating this thing. And, and another thing, they say that a, a, as the balloon, is, it's, it's roaring. It's ready to go. Um, that once they let out some ballast, that this thing begins to take off, and it, it gets about 15 feet off the ground. And so it's there, and you got all these people that are in it. And, and, and while it's like 15 feet off the ground, it doesn't go any further. Why? Because it's staked. They've got like five or six ropes hanging off of this thing. They've got it staked. And what they do is they continue to just roar that flame. They're building all of this energy and all this heat. And it's, it, it, it's going and you can, you can just hear it. And, and eventually what they do is simultaneously they, they get all of these ropes and they undo them at the same time. And that, that balloon, that hot air balloon literally just rockets right up and takes off. And I can only imagine if you're like me, I'm a thrill seeker. And so I love the ride, like uh, go to the amusement parks and ride all the things. And I don't know if you've ever been on a slingshot or you've been on something that just shoots you up and you're like, this is incredible. I can't imagine what that, would, what that feeling would be like as it shoots you straight up. And, but here's the coolest thing. Why am I telling you this? Here's the coolest thing. Because they say that when you're about a thousand feet off the ground and you're looking, you're looking over the edge and the field's looking really tiny that you actually can't hear anything. You, you, you don't hear a sound. There's, there's like, there, there's nothing. And the reason why, not even a whisper, the reason why is because the balloon is floating with the wind. It's going the same speed as the wind. So you, you can't, the only thing, the only thing that you can hear is the roaring engine as they continue to heat this balloon. That's it. And, and, and could you imagine being inside the bucket and the fire and, and you look up and you're just, you get, I, I would get the thought, like, Lord, please, 
don't let the flame burn up the balloon. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I just get that feeling and, oh, I, I just, I imagine what that would be like. But you know the only thing, this is crazy, it's, it's amazing that uh, with all of the excitement and the energy and it's still frightening, you know, one of the things that keeps the balloon from flying up three to 4,000 feet so quickly and that gundalo in the balloon just raising so quick, holding it down is five, and s- five to six ropes, tethering that thing to the ground. And, and I wonder if you've got some ropes in your life, in your thought life that are tethering you down and you've got the Holy Spirit inside you, you've got this raging flame and, and, you, and, and all that God wants to do in your life you just want to take off and you've got this gorgeous gundalo, you've got all the pieces and you've got the beautiful balloon and you've got everything but there are some ropes that are holding you down in your thought life and you just can't get up just about 15 feet. You're just, you're just stuck and maybe you don't even know it and today... I believe that in this message that the Lord is going to untie those ropes in your life, in your thought life. And you're going to be able to reach what God has for you. I want to talk to you today about protecting your mind. Protecting your thought life. And if you'll catch this, I believe it'll change the trajectory of your life. And just like a hot air balloon that just wants to rock it and just take up, I believe that, that if you'll catch this, it'll change all that God has for you and you'll be able to walk in what he has for you. Amen? Amen. So as you're getting to Ephesians 6, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. That we're all running together and give you context for what we're about to read. See, who's the author? Who, who is the audience? What's going on? So before we jump into the scripture, Paul is the guy that actually wrote this. And, and, and Paul in the Bible, by the way, is, is somebody who's like really good at building church. He's really good. The way that God has used him, his past and where he's brought him to, he's really good at building church. And so he's really gifted at building churches in all different kind of cities. And, and so he's writing a letter to a church in a city called Ephesus. In fact, most of the book of Ephesians that we're about to get into has to do with what the church looks like and how the church should be. And so he gets to the end of his letter, and and which normally at the end of the letter is the most important stuff right there, the most important thing. And so at the end of the letter, he starts talking about the battle that we are in, the battle that they are in, and it actually equates to the battle that you and I are in right now. You and I, every single one of us. And he starts talking about what's going on. And let me just read to you exactly what he says in this letter. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. If you're with me, say yeah. Okay. I was a little bit taken off guard. I didn't. You're here. All right, here we go. So finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and the authorities. Against, against the, uh, 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 and so against powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, somebody say therefore. Why'd you put it therefore? Well, you're going to find out. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes that you might be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, and your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now Paul, he's describing, this is awesome, he, he's basically saying, guys, listen, I know that you love Jesus. I know that you love church. But just a heads up, there's a very real enemy. There's a very real battle. There's a real enemy. There's a real force. And he's saying, guys, just a heads up, I want to make sure that you know God is not going to put you in a battle that you can't win. Or that he didn't already win. I want to point out something that you did not see in this scripture. You did not see God equip you with armor for your back. Because God didn't call you to retreat. God has called you to walk forward into what he has for you. 
Do you see that? He didn't call you to shrink back and to run away and to go hide. God has called you to take new territory daily. Amen? So God is equipping you with a battle that you can win. He's saying, listen, the, uh, the, uh, the only way that you can win this battle is if you put on the armor of God. Now this armor has been provided by your God, our God. It's not something that you can earn. It's not something that, oh, I tithed enough, now I can do it. Oh, I planted a high school campus experience, that's great. <laughs> Wow, now I can get the armor of God. No, 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 no. God gives you this armor. And you are fit for the fight. He's also saying that literally in Jesus Christ you can have victory. Because victory belongs to God. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, that the evil one, the devil... He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus said that I have come that, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. My Bible says greater is he that is in me than what's around me. So you don't have to be afraid of somebody who's already been defeated. God wants you to be fit for your fight. Amen? Amen? So you've got to engage with the proper armor to rage war and to move ahead in your life. Ain't nobody going to go play Call of Duty and, and not have body armor on. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you ain't going to do it. And so, but I've got good news. God is giving you the armor. God has already given you the victory. He has given you the, all the armor that you need, therefore, to stand against the enemy. See, we're not hoping for victory we have victory. We're, we don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. That's where we stand. The devil has already been defeated. And we're going to keep moving forward into the call of God and what he has for us. Into the future that he's got planned for our life. Into destiny. Into the dreams that he has planned over you. You are getting fit for your fight right now. Are you with me? So I want to preach today, and you can write down the title of our talk. It's called this, Protecting Your Mind. Protecting Your Mind, because we are going to untether all of the things that the enemy is trying to bound you to the ground. So that you can soar into what God has for you. Amen? Because I believe that, that if you are going to walk in your full God-given potential, it has everything to do with the power of your thinking. It has everything to do with your thought life and what the devil, what the enemy is trying to fight for is for your mind. And God wants you to walk in right thinking. That's what God wants for you. The ability to have right thinking. The devil wants to mess with your mindset. He wants you to question what is truth. But God wants to elevate your thinking. God wants to take you to new levels. God wants to give you the, the ability to have truth. By the way, there isn't a your truth or a my truth. There is the truth. And it's the living word of God. Where does your moral compass get set? Right here. That's what governs your life. I don't care what fact checker there is out there. This is what we line up our life with. Period. This is what governs it. So the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to put on the helmet of salvation. You've got to put this on. In fact, I want you to write this down because you need to get your mind right. And it starts with getting your mind right. Getting your mind right. Get your mind right. Thinking right. There's nothing worse than having your thinking in the gutter. You could call it stinking thinking, right? I remember, I remember when I was in fourth grade, I shared with you guys how, how it was for me a few weeks ago academically, just some of the struggles that I walked through um, and, and some of the pivoting points in fifth grade and, and all of that stuff. And if you missed it, just rewind a couple weeks, go back on the podcast and get caught up. But, but when I was in fourth grade, I would walk around literally in, in my thought life. I, I, I felt like feelings are always real doesn't mean they're valid. And I, I felt like I was basically dumber than a box of rocks, that, that nobody liked me. 
that's literally what I thought. And because I was constantly thinking about it, that I actually got to the point where I would say it. And I would tell my friends, people that were close to me, I, I, I would be like, listen, nobody likes me. You guys don't like me. And here's the deal. They stopped being around me because of my negativity. If you want to have a lot of friends, don't be a negative Nancy. I, I, I'm, just, like, I'm just telling you, okay? Don't be a negative Nancy. If you're in here and your name's Nancy, I'm not talking about you, okay? Unless you're being a negative Nancy, then I am talking about you, all right? Okay, so that's what it is. But, but listen, we've got to have positive thinking. We've got to have right thinking. I think you can all think of somebody in your life right now that you're just like, oh my goodness, here we go again. Would you give it a break, right? Am I the only person that's had their thinking go bad? That just get astray? Come on, I know that we're in church. And, and so usually my mind goes, goes a, a, astray when I'm out of church. And when I'm out of the things of God. And when I'm out of the word, the Bible, and when I'm out of the presence of God, that's why I need to go to church weekly. That's why I need to be in the Bible daily. Daily. That's why I need some worship music. Can we give it up for Sozo real quick? Sozo worship. Man, I, we need a soundtrack, guys. Like, Nate, let's get on it. You know what I'm saying? We, so we can get some worship in the background, you know? And so we need that. And, and I know that my thinking, for me, can go bad in just a few days. Anybody else? It can go. It, it can go and do you ever watch somebody drift away from God? I think we've all seen that with Rona, right? We've seen people all of a sudden, they, they've drifted away from God. Did you know that God never drifted away from them? That's truth right there. But here's the deal, their thinking goes before their body goes. It started with thoughts. So you've got to get your mind right. So what does he say? He says, get your mind, your brain, your, over your thinking, I want you to put on the helmet of salvation. What is salvation? Salvation is belief in Jesus. So I need the cross. So I need the truth of Jesus. So I need the facts that I am righteous and that I have been called. I, I love what Nate said. You, you, come on, when you're in the presence of God, you are righteous. That's how he's always going to see you because your life is hidden in Christ Jesus. I need that over my thinking. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get weird thoughts. And if those weird thoughts don't line up with the word of God, then I don't have those thoughts anymore. That's just the way that it's got to be. Period. So I need the helmet of salvation. This is so important because if you don't have the helmet of salvation protecting your brain, if you don't have the helmet protecting your mindset, then the devil can run in and just give you all kinds of negativity. All of a sudden you're getting those desires to want to steal things. All of a sudden you want to say words that you shouldn't really be saying. All of a sudden you want to smoke things that you shouldn't be smoking. All of a sudden you've got unforgiveness. And I'm sure you're guilty because I've been guilty. I've said out of my mouth, I'll never forgive so and so. Did you know that's not biblical? Should have never came out of my mouth. Shouldn't come out of your mouth. And I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to give my mind over to the enemy. My mind is sacred. It's got to be protected. I'm not going to let the enemy come in and plant all kinds of seeds and thoughts of insecurity and, 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 and jealousy and envy and bitterness and thoughts like I don't fit in and I don't have any friends and thoughts of lust and, and all of those things. Impure thoughts. He can't just run in my mind. Anybody else? So I need a helmet. Remember, do you remember when you were little? And your parents would like, they, they would always have you put on your helmet whenever you were riding your bike. Do you remember that? In fact, right now, this is, this is really fun inside our house. Where uh, I'm teaching Mila to ride a bike. And it's like, it's like a blast. In fact, I brought a picture with me. I got to show you. This is incredible. I'm just going to put it up real quick. Oh, my gosh. Like, seriously. Um, and so, so what I love about it is, is that she puts on all of her armor, if you will. Okay? 
And so she's, she's got the knee pads on, the gloves, and the, and the oh, and she's ba- if she could be in bubble wrap, I'd make sure she was in bubble wrap. And so, um, and so she, get, she gets her helmet on, and I, can I just, can I talk to you, young men in the room, can I just tell you for a second, listen, one day you are going to grow up and you are going to have kids. And I got to tell you, as a, as a young man, as a father that you will be one day, there is nothing wrong with grabbing your children and squeezing them tight and giving them affection and telling them, I love you, I love you, I love you, oh my gosh, and squeezing her cheeks. And I wish that picture was up right now because if she was here, I would squeeze her and I would kiss her and there is nothing wrong with that. That's okay. All right, I just want to tell you, there, it is totally manly. All right, it is manly. And so... But, but you remember, like, like your parents, I'm in this season with my daughter, and I'm like, you got to put on a helmet. You've got to wear a helmet. Why? Because they knew, they know, I know she's total savage, okay? You know, she's going to get on this bike, she's going to go, right? It's just, it could be a mess, it could be, and so they know, but why? Because they want to protect your brain. What is God saying to you? He said, you need a helmet over your head just in case you fall in life. Just in case you have an oops in life, you need to protect your mind. And, and the only way that you can get your mind right is putting on this, the helmet of salvation. And, and look at this promise here. Watch this. This is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. I love this scripture so much. It says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So in other words... When you start dealing with anxiety and fear, that is not from God. When you start dealing with depression, that is not from God. And I don't know about you, maybe you need reminded, every knee bows to the name of Jesus. Every name, every sickness, every disease, whatever it might be, has to bow its name to the name of Jesus. Period. God never tests you or plagues you with fear. That's not God. Absolutely not. In fact, all through scripture, God's theme is strong and be courageous. God is trying to get you to be stronger. He's trying to get you to have courage to seize the opportunity. And he's trying to have you walk in the will of God for your life. So fear is from below. Fear is from the wicked one. And God has not given you a spirit of fear, not fear for the future, not fear of failure, not fear of what's going to happen in your friend group or with your grades or what's going on. God is not the author of fear. God is the author of faith. So God has not given me a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind. So, okay, that's good. So in other words, when my mind is rattling, when my mindset's not healthy, when I've got thoughts that are not okay, nope, God gave me the ability to think right. And it starts right there just like that. I don't know if I could do that. It starts right there just like that. God gave me discipline. So I'm not going to think evil thoughts. I'm not going to think in revenge. I'm not going to think in lust. I'm not going to think in greed. God gave me a sound mind. Depression isn't my portion. God didn't give me a spirit of fear. God gave me a spirit of power. He gave me a spirit of love and a sound mind to think right. To think well. God's trying to get you to elevate your thinking. God's trying to get you to think better. If you think better, you'll live better. If you think well, you'll live well. It's all about your mind and putting on the helmet of salvation. So just like that hot air balloon, you can fly up in all that God has for you. Are you feeling me today, church? I'm going to invite the worship team to come on out because we're going to get ready to close. I want to encourage you this week. I want to challenge you with something. Here's what I want to challenge you with, is that you, you put on God's thoughts instead of your own. I know that seems pretty simple. It really is that simple. That this week you put on God's thoughts and His promises. In other words, we're going we're, we're gonna to make our minds think about how good God is. 
instead of how bad the situation you think it might be. I wonder what your week would look like if you just elevated your thinking. I wonder how you would feel. I wonder how you would sleep at night. I wonder how, how those relationships would go if you were from a place with a full cup instead of a cup that's overfilling, over too full, spilling over on everybody. Change your thinking. Did you know that when you and I, when we get into the Word of God, by the way, that's how we change our thinking. When we get into the Word of God, did you know if you get into God's Word right now over the next four days, four days, if you read God's Word every day for four days, did you know that depression will go down 70%? Did you know that? Did you know that anxiety goes down, I think it's at like 90%. It's like really, really crazy high. You know what else is wild? Just four times. Four times a week. If you just got in the word of God four times a week, did you know evangelism goes up 270%? I don't know what to share at a high school campus. I don't know. I don't have anything to give. I know you don't have anything to give. That's okay. Because you got to get it for yourself so that you can give it away. It's hard to lead somebody where you haven't been. It's hard to look at somebody in the eyes and tell them that they are loved if you haven't seen it for yourself. Are you hearing me, church? Are you hearing me, church? We've got to change our thinking. You've got to put on the helmet of salvation and go, I am blessed. I am loved. I'm anointed. I'm called. I'm graced. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. God has plans for me, great plans from since before I was even born. God had plans for me. Boy, what would your week look like if you went and go in on cloud nine? Let's go! You know what I'm saying? It'd be like Seneca Valley coming up on October 26th. You think those 70 football players know what's coming their way? Oh, come on, somebody. God's about to show up. You know what I'm saying? They don't even know how good they can have it. But it starts with you understanding how good you can have it. I just want to tell you, son. I want to tell you, daughter. Like I would tell Mila. Can we put back up that picture? That picture doesn't probably mean as much to you as it does to me. But I can tell you I would die for her. I can tell you that there's nothing that would stop me from getting to her. Nothing. One day you'll experience that for yourself. You will. But you know what's amazing when your thinking's right? The hard situations that you go through in life, she'll never go through those things. The lid in my life is her platform. Isn't that awesome? Because when God sets you free, he sets everybody around you free. When God sets you free, it changes generations to come. Your decision to sit here in this church service right now is not an accident. God's doing something in your life. And it starts with your thinking. It starts with you knowing that you're called. And that God's got big plans for you. And anything that you've walked through in your life that's been hard and nasty and negative, God never intended that to happen to you. But you've got a decision to make. And it can shape the trajectory of your life. And just like that hot air balloon, when you go up, it'll take everybody in that gondola with you. Amen. Let me pray for you, and then we're going to worship. We're going to have a great time. Father, I thank you for everybody in here under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you for your word today. Father, I thank you that right now you're doing a work in our hearts and in our minds. Father, that you're, you're rewriting things right now. You're removing stinking thinking. Lord, that you're doing miracles in our life right now. And I thank you that the people that we're around, the people that we interact with, that 
Lord, what you do in our life, it is going to overflow onto them. Because you're a God of miracles. So I thank you, Jesus, for, for doing the work in everybody in here in their mind. And creating a hunger, Lord, a hunger for the word of God, a hunger for the things of you, a hunger for church services and messages, Lord, and, and the, just the desire to sit in your presence and to read the Bible, read the word daily, a hunger supernaturally, Lord. I thank you for doing that right now. In Jesus' name, everybody said... Amen. Sozo, would you stand to your feet? Would you come on up here? We're going to praise and worship God.